I have this thing here which is been sitting here in an open container like this. This is dimethyl toluidine dissolved in some solution of hydrochloric acid. I will increase the pH so it's basic and then I will extract that with chloroform because I don't have this here by hand. And looks like this is clean at least. Yeah. So that should be easy job because I have some triethylamine, of course, which I'm using for my polymerization experiments. And also I've got this guy, which is phenylbis 246 trimethylbenzoyl phosphine oxide. And this should be very good photo initiator. Then I've got some, some test tubes. I've got a lot of them, so I can do a lot of experiments. So I make some sodium hydroxide solution or a solution of water in sodium hydroxide because I want it strong yeah that's good enough probably so now I will slowly add this okay now we are getting there if you see the effect Why does this look like it's solid when it should be? Actually, I shouldn't really. Okay, now it's strongly alkaline. So, I will try to cool this down as fast as possible. This will take probably like 15 minutes or so. And then I will proceed to extraction. So, I looked at how this thing should look like. They say it's viscous liquid, well this looks more solid, but it has very characteristic minty odor, so it should be it. Okay, so let's get chloroform and let's start with cleaning this thing a little bit. I can confirm that whatever was on top now is on bottom, so it should be extracted. The problem is that it doesn't really seem to be coalescing too well. Yeah, so I, what I was hoping to get two clean layers, but there are three still. Okay, so let's get whatever is in chloroform into this beaker. This thing is contaminated with chloroform anyway, so I will dump this into this beaker. Okay, so whatever it was in chloroform is now here, so I will process this like tomorrow, I guess. And we are left with pretty much, pretty much this junk. Okay, well, so I forgot what was there, but it is already purple which I saw this to be an effect of UVC on some resins that I made before so here is chloroform at least 
I have only big hot plate right now, so let's try to evaporate this as much as possible and not die in the process of doing it. Okay, the color of the liquid is starting to change, so I think I will swap containers so I can control temperature much more precisely. Well, it's 36, 42. Okay, I think we are done. It's maybe a little bit impure, but that's to be expected. And as you can see this, it is very brown, but it also diffracts light quite a lot. I'm not sure if you can see it, probably not very well. Also it smells very minty, almost like, I don't know, ether or something like Ether and some ethyl benzoate, or I have a little bit of ethyl benzoate here. Yeah, very much like ethyl benzoate, somewhere between ethyl benzoate and ether. Okay, so this is what I've got. There may be a little bit of chloroform, but it's fairly concentrated. So I started with 46.42 grams, so that's somewhere around 1.8 grams of dimethyl toluidine. Okay, so to turn this into more manageable substance I'm going to dilute it with the with methyl metacrylate. This is with this is clean with no hydroquinone and dimethyl toluidine. So I want eight percent solution so that I can dilute easily to four, two and one and zero point five percent solutions and zero point twenty five probably and then half of that. So I need, so since this is 1.8 grams, I need to add 23 grams of this. So that's fairly easy, and let's do that. Okay, so, so 21.2 plus this 1.8 is 23 grams. So this is what I want. So I prepared myself some notes. This will be the layout of what I put in these tubes. These are some notes, so I don't waste material, and I'm quite sure that I can work with concentrations that I intend to work with. And yeah, I think I won't bore you, and I will set this up, and we'll see what happens. Now here you can see how this TPO looks like. It's It looks almost like benzyl. It has this greenish tint to it and it is very fine powder. Okay, well, I am done. I mean, it didn't hurt, but fuck's sake, I had to scrap one batch of this because I lost my, my track. So, really, probably, what should I, what I should done is make really a checklist with individual steps and I can I can then I can mark which are done and which are not at least with like like so many dilutions this is this is starting to look like some bio workup or something like that it's ridiculous anyway fucking hell there was dog yes you can see that this one is shining quite a lot so I will display this and Put it here. Just, no! Fuck. Okay, at 11 points. I would expect CPO to be done, really, right? Because, I mean, it's. It's TPO, it's, it's great, but it's not done. No, 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 no. Fuck's sake, I shouldn't touch this. Quite interesting is that here you can see how light is being absorbed. Now these three are just low amount of TPO, well relatively low, 
this is what eight four two one zero point five but with and this is all two percent TPO but just with very little amounts of amine these are pretty much absorbing all UV light well all you know what I mean that could be interesting thing to observe in real time how this changes or if it does ah this one is done well done it's boiling this one is also starting to boil so this is at 19 minutes or 20 like I see this one is pretty much polymerized this one, this one this one looks like it has something but it's not yet done this is liquid, liquid god damn this is so hard to control ok let me get my pen Man, this is completely like I don't understand this. This doesn't make any sense. Anyway, okay, so this thing, this was 0.25% DMT, never polymerized. It could be because this food provides some kind of isolation, thermal isolation, which could accelerate these reactions but anyway here is so here is 8% TPO it finally did polymerize but again it was without this thermal insulation so maybe that was a factor finally these two okay this one is pretty much terrible this is 0 0.25 TPO I think no it's only 0 0.5 TPO and this one too is 1% TPO which didn't polymerize which is quite strange when you think about it because 2% TPO polymerize at first huh huh hmm I don't fucking understand this anyway now here you can see these as they were in the cells so first part is one first line, second line, third line and then one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five like in cells and strange thing is that as you can see here the color is quite yellow here but here the concentrations of the TPO was the same and the color is more clear. It's quite hard to judge the color of these boiled over pieces because they are much more they look much more white but they are not. Here you can see from previous run with benzyl dimethyl ketal these were exposed on sunlight for like I don't know like three four months and this is how they look now. This one wasn't enclosed in glass and it did not change color very much perhaps at all so similar to previous run I want to check the properties of this thing and okay this was done in 24 minutes it's 3 5 I think and you can see that it is it is very fragile but very scratch resistant there are almost no marks okay 
this is very impressive I have to press really hard to scratch the surface of this thing well maybe not that much but and this was done in 40 minutes and yeah it's maybe better but it's not good from the sound I mean yeah this is this is not great I mean the surface of this thing is not very smooth so this is not great test maybe try bottom yeah it's okay the thing is that I heard from people with 3D printers that use this type of initiator that they have problems with their prints being quite fragile and I think this is the this is the reason why it's not very great really so here the fastest time was 20 minutes with no I mean which I guess could be expected because this is free radical initiator uh, but as far as I saw all the recipes use some amine so not sure and the thing is that here it was done in 21 minutes okay it did boil but that's not really the point I guess this is still much faster and the result was much better than uh, with benzyl dimethyl ketal I mean it was more transparent this was this piece ah fuck so yeah I guess there is a little bit of yellow but this was completely clear right it was which one it was this one is pretty much perfect but still I don't quite I don't quite understand how they get like one minute uh, complete polymerization time maybe maybe then you, they use some they use some copolymer which I can try I wanted to try that I think I will do that next time but also I but also I will probably try to buy some resins and see how they react with experiment like this